This news is funded by viewers like you. Please support our work at democracynow.org slash give. Welcome to Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. In Gaza, an Israeli attack on an UNRWA school and shelter has killed at least 40 Palestinians overnight, including 14 children in the Nusrat refugee camp. Dozens of people were injured in the attack. The school was being used to house displaced Palestinians. One survivor said he'd sought refuge at the school after being displaced first from Gaza City, then Khan Yunus, and then Rafah. Survivors described the school as being shelled with a belt of fire. We were sleeping when we suddenly saw a rocket falling on us. On the second floor, there were martyrs, and on the first floor, there were injured. That's all we saw. Only God can help us. I was asleep when I found myself covered in rubble. The rocket hit. It came through the second floor. We came out to help people and the martyrs. An Al Jazeera reporter at the scene said a number of women, children and the elderly were among the victims. Israel claimed members of Hamas were at the U.N. school, but provided no evidence to back this up. In other news from Gaza, the U.N. Food Agency has issued a dire warning, stating, quote, over one million people, half the population of Gaza, are expected to face death and starvation by mid-July, unquote, if Israel's war on Gaza does not end. The warning comes in a new report on global hunger that also says the risk of starvation persists in Sudan, Haiti, Mali and South Sudan. Meanwhile, UNICEF says 90 percent of children in Gaza lack the nutrition needed for proper growth. Karen Huster, a medical advisor with Doctors Without Borders in Gaza, said there's been a, quote, insane escalation of hostilities across the Gaza Strip over the last two days. We have seen hospitals being bombed. We have seen refugee camps being bombed. We have seen humanitarian warehouses being bombed. The situation is apocalyptic. This morning, on my way to the hospital, I saw two donkeys carrying the bodies of at least eight people uh, who had died in the hostilities of the last night. When we arrived, the emergency room was completely packed. There were families screaming. There was a man screaming for his family that had died. In occupied East Jerusalem, mobs of far-right Israelis attacked Palestinians and several journalists, including Saif al-Kawasmi, on Wednesday, during the Jerusalem Day flag march to mark the anniversary of Israel's seizing of East Jerusalem, the West Bank and Gaza, in 1967. In Palestine, June 5th is known as the Naksa, meaning setback. During Wednesday's march, Israelis were heard chanting, death to Arabs and may your village burn. Police reported making 18 arrests. Israel's announced it's shutting down a desert prison camp where Palestinian prisoners from Gaza say they were routinely beaten and tortured. Last month, three Israeli whistleblowers who worked at Sadi Teman spoke to CNN. One whistleblower shared photographs that showed Palestinians being strapped down, blindfolded and held in diapers at the site. Some prisoners had limbs amputated due to injuries sustained from constant tight handcuffing. Spain's announced plans to join South Africa's genocide case against Israel at the International Court of Justice. Spain joins other countries, including Colombia, Mexico, Egypt, Turkey, who have requested to join South Africa's case. Meanwhile, President Biden and the leaders of 16 other nations have just issued a joint statement supporting the ceasefire and hostage deal that Biden outlined last week. In California, Stanford University says it's suspending 13 students who were arrested Wednesday after they briefly occupied the office of the president. The student activists are accused of injuring a law enforcement officer and causing extensive damage to Stanford property. Students are demanding Stanford disclose and divest their investments in Israel. Here in New York, U.N. Secretary General Antonio Guterres gave a major speech on the climate crisis Wednesday, as data confirmed last month was the hottest May on record, putting the Earth on a 12-month streak of record-breaking temperatures. Speaking at the American Museum of Natural History, Guterres said the world, quote, needs an exit ramp off the highway to climate hell and called for a global ban on fossil fuel advertising. We must directly confront those in the fossil fuel industry who have shown relentless zeal for obstructing progress over decades. 
Billions of dollars have been thrown at distorting the truth, deceiving the public, and sowing doubt. Many in the fossil fuel industry have shamelessly greenwashed, even as they have sought to delay climate action with lobbying, legal threats, and massive ad campaigns. And they have been aided and abetted by advertising and PR companies. The World Meteorological Organization said Wednesday there is an 80 percent chance the average global temperature will exceed 1.5 degrees Celsius above pre-industrial levels for at least one of the next five years. But Guterres says that the world can still meet the 1.5 degree target if governments drastically speed up the phase out of fossil fuels. In Ecuador, indigenous and environmental activists demonstrated against state-run oil company PetroEcuador Wednesday after it failed to comply with a court order to shut down gas flares in the Amazon. The flares burn off gas created during oil production. This is indigenous activist Nancy Pilatunya. There's groups that are at the brink of extermination, polluted rivers and polluted water sources that affect city folk as well. It's not an isolated reality. If the Amazon is destroyed, then it will affect all of the Ecuadorian people. Amnesty International, Greenpeace and Amazon Watch are among 50 groups urging President Biden to pardon human rights lawyer Stephen Donziger, who was targeted for prosecution by Chevron after he successfully sued the oil giant on behalf of 30,000 Amazonian indigenous in Ecuador whose land was devastated from oil spills. The director of Amazon Watch said, quote, a pardon will send a clear message that corporations cannot misuse the judicial system to criminalize human rights defenders, unquote. The European Union election is kicking off as voters in the 27 member nations select its new parliament between today and Sunday. Immigrant rights advocates fear expected gains from the far right could worsen the situation for asylum seekers, thousands of whom attempt the treacherous journey to Europe each month via the Mediterranean Sea. Also at the top of voters' concerns are the climate emergency and the economy. In media news, The New York Times has revealed the new chief executive of The Washington Post, Will Lewis, clashed with the paper's executive editor, Sally Busby, Sally Busby, last month over her decision to publish an article about his connection to a major phone hacking scandal at Rupert Murdoch's News of the World newspaper in Britain. Busby resigned from the paper on Sunday, weeks after the clash. The New York Times reports other factors in her resignation included a plan by Lewis to reorganize the Washington Post newsroom and essentially demote her. Politico has described Lewis's new plan for the paper as the Rupert Murdochization of the Washington Post. In Arizona, rights groups are condemning Republican lawmakers for voting to place an anti-immigrant initiative on the November ballot. If passed, the measure would allow local law enforcement to arrest people suspected of crossing the border without authorization and empower state judges to order deportations. The group Lucha Arizona is suing the state over the proposal. Democratic State Representative Annalise Ortiz spoke out on the Arizona House floor earlier this week. Under HCR 2060, my brown skin could be the cause for an Arizona police officer to pull me over, arrest and detain me on suspicion that I don't belong in the state where I was born and raised. My community has lived in fear under SB 1070, and the provisions in HCR 2060 will instill that same fear, especially for our children who have parents who are undocumented. And Senate Republicans voted down a bill that would establish federal protections for access to contraception. Republican Senators Susan Collins and Lisa Murkowski backed the measure alongside Democrats, but the 51 to 39 vote fell short of the 60 votes needed to overcome a filibuster. And those are some of the headlines. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. Democracy Now! is funded by viewers like you. Please give today at democracynow.org slash give.